Hello again, everyone. I'm Tom Dorado. Welcome to the Bob Simmons Show. We'll take you to Starkville, Mississippi this week as the Cowboys hit the road for the first time in 99. We'll also show you a typical week in the life of a major college football coach. You'll see it for yourself. It includes much more than X's and O's. Big Courtney Mallory, who returned an interception for a touchdown, will join us on our Get to Know the Cowboys segment. So you stay with us. We'll have all this and a lot more after this opening. Time out. The Bob Simmons Show is brought to you by Phillips 66, the performance company. Southwestern Bell, the exclusive communications choice of the OSU Cowboys. By Oklahoma Tank Lines, a proud sponsor of Oklahoma State Athletics. By the Johnson Auto Family, just a short drive from high prices. And by the OSU Posse, reminding you to wear orange and purchase officially licensed OSU products. What's your idea of a dream home? Beautiful plush carpeting? A spacious master bath? A state-of-the-art sound system? Whatever your idea of a dream home is, enter the Southwestern Bell Homecoming Giveaway. Brought to you in part by Phillips 66. Call 1-877-BIG-12-FUN toll-free for a chance to win $100,000 toward your dream home or hundreds of other prizes. So dream big. Call today to enter and find out more about the winning team of phone services from Southwestern Bell. It's happening now at any Johnson's Auto Family location. Kingfisher, Chickasha, Enid, and Stillwater. It's our year-end closeout sale. We are moving out the 99s. Save thousands at Johnson's on that new Dodge, Chrysler, or Plymouth. A rainbow of colors to choose from in trucks, cars, minivans, custom vans, and Durangos. All sale priced. The year-end closeout sale going on now at any Johnson's Auto Family location. Your Dodge, Chrysler, Plymouth dealer. A short drive from high prices. If you're a respected driver, then you should be working with a respected company. At Oklahoma Tank Lines and United Petroleum Transports, our drivers are the tops in their fields and respected for it. That's why we provide continuing training, competitive wages and benefits, and the finest equipment coupled with complete field support. With the Oklahoma Tank Lines United Petroleum Transport professional driver career path, there is always room to move up for those who can meet the challenge. Call our driver recruiter today and get rolling with OTL. Well, indeed, welcome back to the show. Bob, we just got back from Starkville. I can't really, going back to the last thing we said on the pregame radio show, it was the last remark, and boy, did it ever come true. Can't turn it over, can't play short field, that's what happened. Well, that's right, Tom. You know, anytime you go on the road, and we talk about this as a team, that uh, obviously turnovers is a big factor. And one of the things that uh, we talk about going to this game is really not turning the ball over and giving them great field position uh, for a home team. And uh, uh, that ball game was a game, I think, uh, we had about seven or eight turnovers mm -hmm. at a key point, which uh, led to uh, their, their, their early touchdowns. I know a lot of people have asked me, take us inside the locker room before we start looking at the tape. And again, the first road trip, what'd you tell the squad after the game? Well, you know, I, I told them that uh, I've been here five years. Uh, these are, these are fifth-year seniors, and obviously, uh, they understand what it takes to win, and when you have turnovers uh, and have mistakes on both sides of the ball on the road, uh, you know, it's, it's really not about coming out and winning. Execution was the, the thing that we really talked about doing, and uh, now we got to come back. we got to regroup this week and, and get ready for the uh, 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 Big 12 game with uh, Nebraska. But this game, as you can see, looking at the uh, uh, our highlights here. This is their first drive where one thing that our defense did do is hold them to uh, three points. Mm -hmm. I think that's uh, that's Massey coming through for a hurry throw and coming back through for another hurry throw. And This is a tip ball, but the AP did a nice job of coming in and knocking the ball down. And, and they, we settled for three points, considering that they had a big play in this drive that got them down there. That's the one thing that the defense did not let them do, get into the end zone. and. Uh, uh, I thought that, that that was a good turnaround to stop them from three. We get the ball back out when they kick off, and we start off with about a four or five yard gain uh, from Nathan. And our offense is pretty much moving, moving the ball at this point in time. Nice throw by uh, by BJ. Nice catch by by uh, I think Ethan Howe. We got the ball out to the 30. Uh, we got a, a screen call here back into Jamal Fobbs. He gets about eight yards, and so our our defense is third and one. We're moving the ball first first down in the ball game. So we're on on schedule, so to speak, and we come out here uh, and we go into a scramble situation where they come up, uh, and, and again, B.J. has to put, he can't hold that ball out, he's got to put it away when he's in a crowd, 
uh, and they watch film too, and they come and knock the ball back out. So that's first sudden change. Our defense come back on the field. Uh, they come out and throw a, a short pass uh, for about uh, five or six yards, and then we bring a, a safety stunt where they, they run the, the blitz right into that safety stunt and break it off. Uh, we get a saving tackle, and I think that's the AP again. And, and uh, now we're in goal line situation. Our objective is to really try to hold them three points right now. Uh, and you can see the defensive wall just stiffens up and, and uh, they try to run the ball inside. There's four or five guys around the tackle, gang tackle. We get them in a third down situation. Nice play by our secondary. I think that's Shepard makes mm -hmm. a force throw. And again, considering where they drove the ball down to uh, and the sudden change that uh, that first turnover caused, three points is exactly what you want to try to come out. Three or no points. They achieve that goal. We go back on offense. Uh, we got a, a great play called. Uh, again, B.J. Is, is running the ball. I think he gets about eight or nine yards mm -hmm. on that first drive, come back out with the same call. Uh, and again, he gets the first down, but he needs to stretch that play out. It's just not a quarterback play. It's an option play. Then we go back. Uh, with, I think that's a missed handoff, and, he, and he's uh, dancing around here, and that ball is still hanging out loose, and they strip it. The ball should be in the other hand, away from the crowd, uh, and that's our second turnover in the ball game. Second sudden change. Uh, defense comes in. And, uh, they complete a pass, but... Uh, uh, but again, we want to come out with either no points or three points. Uh, we do a good job, and I think there was another blitz they break it into. Uh, their offensive line was pretty good. And when, when we were stunting, they came out and they hit some gaps here. Uh, we had a coverage call here. It really was a coverage bust. That, out, that defensive back should be outside of that man. He was inside. So fundamentally, uh, he was not in the right place, and they go for two points. And our defense come up with a stop. So now we're behind 12-0, and it's only the first quarter. We talked about adversity. We said, you know, you may get some adverse situations. Uh, and so we're behind 12 nothing, and really try to get the momentum going. Uh, here's a, a first opportunity. I thought right, right here. Hey, right it's going to turn uh, right here. Uh, uh, we come up with a uh, turnover by them. Uh, I think the guy that recovered the fumble, I can't see stays, it. I that was a great stage. Mm -hmm. But that puts us in great field position now to try to get a drive going. Uh, we come out here uh, with uh, a change of quarterbacks. Again, he's carrying the ball with one hand. We got to put it away as he starts to run, try to put it away. It hits his foot. Uh, another fumble situation. Uh, our defense, I think, comes back out here now. Uh, and, and this is not, this is unusual, but we give up a long run at this point in time uh, because we're not in the right position to miss tackles. And we're down real quick, second quarter, 19 to nothing. Uh, and, you know, and this is the time where we got to pick it up offensively. We're facing some adverse situations. Come back out across the 50. Nice run by BJ Tiger. Takes it down to the 30-yard line. We got to get some points on the board. Uh, we shift them all out uh, into a one-on-one -on -one situation. Uh, nice catch. Uh, again, I think that's about. Uh, this I think this is third down now. Right. And here's again center quarterback exchange. So you can see how we go turnover, 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 and we never get into the rhythm of the game. But they give it right back to us. Defense comes up. Uh, we get the ball back. Now we got a chance to get on the board here. Uh, we go. Uh, uh, Nice throw. Uh, boy, that was pass interference, but I'd mm -hmm. like to see that ball caught. we, we got to make the tough catches. That puts us down on the 15-yard uh, line here, and, and uh, uh, we're, we're throwing it out to, uh, to Howell here. He gets out of bounds, uh, and we settle for three points. But we'd like to have gotten seven. Uh, we come out with three, but now we're on the board. Yeah, a penalty had pushed the Cowboys back, forced that pass there. 19-3, to I don't think anybody in the stadium really felt, even though they were wearing maroon colors, felt it. Mississippi State was in total control of that now, football game. It, it, and it really wasn't panic on our part. It's the thing that we had to get straight in the locker room. This is, man, we, we coughed, that, that coughed up the ball about, mm -hmm. four or five t about four times and gave them great field position. Uh, and we cannot allow our defense to be put on the field in those kind of situations, although they did arise to the occasion and yep. did a good job. In the second half now, the, the defense comes out, tries to force the issue, tries to force turnovers. Incidentally, we had a nice crowd we on We had a nice hand, crowd. That's the one thing uh, that I wanted to say that uh, that orange was, was very evident in that crowd. But we come back out, uh, you can see we're getting a lot of pressure here on, on from our defensive front. Uh, front four come in and come out with a sack. I think that's, uh, Warner. Uh, that's Zach Warner. Zach Warner is really playing a pretty good football for us. I think we forced him into a passing situation here, and Alvin Porter did a nice job of coming up. He had a great game, two interceptions, but it gives us great field position. Nice break, uh, huh? and, and we're in great position. Yeah, great break, but we're in great position now uh, to get back into this ball game here. We got to get something started. Uh, we got uh, this is a I think that's Ben Bowling. Mm -hmm. Didn't get his feet set. Just went back and threw it. Uh, we got great field position. Then we turn it back and give it back to him. 
Uh, and so it was one of those games where uh, we could never get anything going on offense. Uh, the defense is, is uh, coming up. Uh, that's a great play. And I can't see the guy. Woody Stevens. That's Woody Stevens comes around on a stunt, makes a great tackle here. Uh, and that's the one thing that our coaches talk about. Uh, the one thing that we didn't do well on defense that we got to get better at is making tackles. This is a nice play by Chris Master. This is one of the better tackles. Free safety blitz uh, came in, made a nice play here. Got him in a long situation here. Uh, he, and they come out with a middle screen uh, incomplete. Uh, we force a punt. And it's still at this time, Tom, it's 19 to 3. Yeah. We're, we're in great. We're still in the ball game. Uh, we get a pretty decent return here by, uh, by Terrence. Takes that ball out about 15 yards on a punt safe return. Uh, got a chance to catch up. We throw a swing here. Nice job by, I think, Jay that makes us miss. Gets out of bounds. We get a, a, a personal foul call that moves it down across the 50 yard line here. Now, we're actually running the ball inside. We're knocking them off the, off the, off the line. Got good surge by our offensive line. Uh, we got good inside push, and we've got a drive going here. Uh, again, four or five yards at a time, taking our time, uh, trying to get on the board. They stop us. We come up with about a 45-yarder, which, again, our kicking game uh, wasn't uh, up to snuff, so to speak. Uh, you know, Tim is normally reliable. He pushed that one to the right. Uh, we came out with no points after that, after that long drive. We come back. Our defense is uh, playing very aggressive. Uh, they struggled on offense, too. They come out throwing the ball here. We tip it. Now, here's the play of the game. Look at that speed at, and then that, that fast. And that. Now, once you can get to the end zone, uh, he can still run across the, across the goal. <laughs> We're going to ask him that a little bit later. Uh, but uh, that was a great play by Courtney. Uh, it got points on the board. It got us back in the ball game. Uh, it, it now we, we decided to go for two, but as you can go through the, the play-by-play -play and see that, that, that's good hands. I think he was a tight end in high school because he reached up and grabbed it. And now that, that nice running for him, <laughs> he, he needs to put, he's swinging that ball, he needs to put that ball away. But he sees pay dirt and he says, well, I just, I'm gonna go ahead and just lay down when I get across. That was our OG&E player of the game, the power play of the game. OG&E proud again to bring you the OG&E greatest cowboy fan search. Log on for your chance to win big at www.ogne.com. OGE power at the speed of life. And that was speed of life right there. Speed of life. We come out. We have to get two points here. Uh, good execution. Kevin gets in the end zone. Uh, now we're, we really were thinking about if we can get uh, another score down down by, uh, well, yeah, what? Well, they helped us right <laughs> there. Yeah, it, it really came up. A defense came back on the field, got a uh, tip ball by, by Cato. And this is a situation I'm talking about now. If we can uh, get some points on the board, either a touchdown or a field goal, it's going to put us. Oh, there's plenty of time there's left. plenty of time left in the ball game time. Uh, we got another turnover. We're down in great field position here. We're running an option, but our quarterback has got to be tight to the line of scrimmage and attack downhill. Uh, we come back here and throw a screen to Jamal Fobbs. Uh, where we lose yardage. It wasn't executed the best. Uh, but we come back out now and, and uh, uh, we throw a, a hitch to, uh, I think that's, uh, uh, Evan Howe, these, these points are crucial uh, because it puts us within eight. We push that to the right, uh, and uh, so we could never find the, the niche on offense to get going. Uh, defensively, we probably could have played better, but they kept us in the ball game. Uh, and again, you, you can't go on the road uh, and play the way we, we uh, play on, on offense or give up long runs on defense. And so we got to go back to the basics and so we can, we can be a better football team. I know people hate <clears throat> to listen to coaches talk about little things. Yeah. But this is a classic example of what little things could do to turn a ball game around. Well, you're absolutely right. The, the little things come in, in turnovers and, and execution in terms of, of uh, our tackling, uh, just the basics. And when we sit there and watch film today, it was very evident that uh, I know you have to do those things on the road to win. You can't give that, the, the home team those kind of advantages. We've got two weeks to get ready for that next yeah, game. Do. You know, a head football coach on this level has to wear many hats and a good many of those have, have nothing to do with drawing up X's and O's. He's the official spokesman for his team. He's constantly answering questions about his program, questions that come from media members and fans alike. On this week's Two Minute Drill, we'll focus on this aspect of college coaching, and it's all brought to you by the American Residential Group. You knew it was coming in. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go. <laughs> the week begins with a Monday press luncheon. Bob puts the wraps on the past weekend and looks ahead to the next game. 
It's wall-to-wall -wall coverage this day as some 60 writers and broadcasters listen and take notes. A midweek posse luncheon gives Bob and his staff a chance to meet with Cowboy backers from around the area. They, too, arrive with questions. Later that night, the head coach talks with OSU fans statewide on his weekly call-in show. And everything is happening like you said it was going to happen as far as having the talent, the numbers, the coaching staff. I mean, everything is falling into place. Well, you know, Nick, I think you always you got to have a dream. And, and then uh, when you set your goals, you, uh, it, it really, I've often said this, and I'll say it in front of this crowd, it has to do with the people that I've been uh, surrounded with, uh, my staff, uh, the president, the, the AD. Uh, it has been a complete effort. Campus living groups host the show each Wednesday night, and the students literally become part of the show. And I was just wondering um, what strengths the new coaches, such as Coach Cassidy and Coach Hickson, Hickson, will bring to the OSU team. And also the gentleman behind me would like to know how uh, Chris Massey's doing. Following each game, Bob meets with writers and broadcasters. He touches base with beat writers on Sunday afternoon via a conference call before taping his TV show later that evening. Important things that we did come out with victory. There are some things that we have to. Monday morning dawns, and the hectic schedule starts all over again. All part of the job, Tom. It is. You get to talk to a lot of people during the week. You get to talk to a lot of people, uh, but that's the role of a head coach. And, and uh, I, I think it's important to have a good staff, which I do, because I'm going to be out uh, of the office, and the staff does a good job, and it's my job to represent the program. Remember those days when all you had to do was just draw up X's and O's? <laughs> show up, huh? It's a different day and age, that's for sure. But I like it. When we return, you're going to meet with the guy who showed that great 40 speed, Courtney Mallory. We'll do that when we return after this timeout. Welcome back to the show. This Get to Know the Cowboys segment is brought to you by Ron Rakes and the team at the Home National Bank, 324 South Duck in Stillwater. And as promised, Courtney Mallory, the man with the speed that you saw on the tape a while back. Tell us about that play. How'd that develop? Well, uh, all week we've been working on the backs was going to leak out the backfield for a little short play. As he leaked through, I kind of jammed him. I just went to the spot he was supposed to be at and picked it off. Because you couldn't hide. I'm sure as big as you are. Huh? <laughs> Tell me about getting to the end zone now. Uh, are you out of shape or are you just Ooh. tired or what? <laughs> no, I ain't out of shape. Just, <laughs> as they say, as close I got to the end zone, it seemed like farther he got. <laughs> well, you got a nice block. TK finally made it where you could get in there at the last five or six yards. Didn't right. he? He, he threw the uh, final block, so when he gave that final block, I knew I had to just get in the end zone, which I got in there. Let me ask you this. Uh, I know uh, defensively we work on sudden change uh, situations all the time, and you probably heard that for a sudden change about four or five times in a row. How do the defense respond to situations like that? Well, we know we just got to go out and just play where we got to um, play football, you know. No matter what um, it comes to sudden change, we know we got to go out and do the job we're supposed to do. Yeah, the one thing that I thought the defense did uh, was really play hard throughout the ball game. Uh, and obviously when you get sudden change, that's what it's for, to try to hold them down. Uh, because I know it's not defense, it's not offense, but you're going to get those kind of situations, and I thought the defense responded well. Tell us about where you are with your graduation right Ooh, yeah. now. Well, I'm just about complete. I'm finished my second degree up this December. So, <laughs> so you have already graduated. Right. Uh, which is uh, coming out of uh, what high school did you come out of? Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King. Mm -hmm. uh, he has to do that coming out of Martin Luther because they all graduate. <laughs> See, I can certainly... <clears throat> feel for what he's gone through, but it only took me seven years to get out, so <laughs> then, no big problem. Okay, now we got, after talking to you after the game, it's Starkville, all thoughts were toward the open week, getting better, correcting the mistakes, and Nebraska. Well, you know, we got this all week, so we're going to go back tomorrow, well, Monday, and look at the film, get, re get ready for Nebraska. We know we got two weeks, you know, it's going to be a big game for us. And we will be ready, right? Yeah. <laughs> you, I'm sure you're expecting a few collisions out there as well. A very physical game last year. Anytime you play in Nebraska, there are going to be a lot of collisions along that front line. Yeah, we know it's going to be a great game because, you know, they're one of the league teams in this conference and in the country. So, you know, we're going to know we have to come out ready to play against this team. 
Well, you had a great game. You had a great career here so far. Still a lot more football to be played. Appreciate you coming by in your off Thanks. day. That is Courtney Mallory. We are back to wrap this all up after this final timeout. For complete sports coverage delivered to your doorstep seven days a week, call the News Press, 372-5000. There's no off-season. Well, we are back, and this week's question from OakState.com, presented by Southwestern Bell. Well, it has to do with a kind of a unique call made late in the game. Oh, it has to do with, uh, I think, that their running back went mm -hmm. out of bounds, uh, and he kept on running, and then we got a, a face mask about uh, 30 yards down the field. Uh, when he stepped out of the bounds, uh, he was out, the, the whistle blew. And so it becomes a dead ball foul after that. Uh, and that's what they did. They brought it back as a dead ball foul because the play was over with, and then they marched it off. Okay, open week. That doesn't mean no yeah. work. Lots of work for people who don't get it usually during the week and some time for people to mend. Well, it, it is. Tell them uh, what we got to do is put this game behind us. There's nothing else we can do about it, and we're going to look at it tomorrow. Uh, this open week, as you said, we could give our players a chance to mend. Uh, but this week is important because we've got to get prepared for uh, the uh, Cornhuskers. Okay, we'll see you tomorrow. Okay. We appreciate you being with us. Again, we'll be back in two weeks. Cowboys do not play Saturday, but we'll see you in two weeks. For Bob Simmons, our entire crew here at Educational Television Services, including Courtney Mallory, Tom Dorado. Goodbye, everybody. The Bob Simmons Show has been brought to you by Philip 66, the performance company. Southwestern Bell, the exclusive communications choice of the OSU Cowboys. By Oklahoma Tank Lines, a proud sponsor of Oklahoma State Athletics. The Johnson Auto Family, just a short drive from high prices. And by the OSU Posse, reminding you to make the Conoco Cowboy Corral a part of your OSU pregame activities at home and on the road. Bob Simmons Wardrobe, provided by R. Lockwood Casual Apparel for Men, Utica Square in Tulsa. And by Bates Brothers in downtown Stillwater, a really great clothing company for over 50 years. OSU Coaches Sideline Apparel provided by Chris's University Spirit, your one-stop cowboy shop.